Hello everybody. Today we're going to do a problem that deals with equilibrium reactions. And so you can see the reaction that I've picked. In this problem we are going to use what people refer to as an ice table in order to calculate the equilibrium concentration of the three different species that you see. We are going to be given the equilibrium constant, which is this K sub C. The C is telling me that I am specifically dealing with concentrations. And so it's implied that I will be dealing with molarity for the units of everything. There's another variation that sometimes you would see. If you ever saw a Kp, then it means that you are dealing with pressures. I'd like to start with just writing out what the equilibrium expression is going to look like. And so over here, I'm going to write Kc is going to be equal to, and then you have your products over your reactants. So my products, I have two of them, PCl3, and then I have Cl2, chlorine gas. Those are my products, and then here are my reactants. Well, only one in this case. Now sometimes I worry about the simplicity of a reaction being misleading. There is a one for the stoichiometry in front of all of these things, which means that I have a one up there as the exponents. Just don't forget that if I had some other number, like let's say that this were a three in some fictitious reaction, then over here I would have to have a three as well. This reaction happens to be simple enough that we don't need to worry about those extra exponents. Quite frankly, the reason why I'm doing a simple reaction like this is because you end up having these huge order polynomials if you use more complicated reactions for this type of problem. So this is going to ultimately be a quadratic and you'll see that in a little bit. Okay, the next thing I need to do is I need to take my initial information about the initial concentration of these things. So here's the volume and then I tried to make it simple and I just said you load 0 0.05 moles of each of these species into this chamber. So they are all initially going to have the same concentration, which is nice. So let's figure out what that is. My molarity is just the moles over the volume. So for all three of my things, initially we have this many moles divided by 2.5 liters. And so I'm just going to write down, remember the square brackets, those are showing concentration, 0 0.02 molar. And I'm just now noticing that I never gave uh, any more sig figs to this guy over here. You're going to see that I'm going to work this problem and ultimately probably hold on to three sig figs. So just assume that that is a 0 0.0500. Okay, now for the ice table. So I'm leaving space underneath the reaction because it's really nice to be able to use that reaction to do some of your bookkeeping here. So write down ICE, ICE table. These stand for things. I for initial, C for change, what's going to be the change in concentration, and E is for equilibrium. So there's nine different numbers that need to be plugged in onto this table here. For us, the initial concentrations of everything is given, or at least we figured it out already. That's not always the case. These ice tables, you know, you, you never quite know exactly what you're solving for until you fill them out. But I coincidentally have the same value for all of them. And then down here, I'm going to have some sort of change, and I'm going to call that a variable down there. Now, you need to keep track of products versus reactants because in some cases concentrations are going to grow and in other cases concentrations are going to go down. So that means you have a plus or a minus sign that's important. I'm going to go ahead and invoke the reaction quotient Q in order to kind of help us understand exactly what's going to happen. If you're not familiar with Q, it has the exact same expression as the equilibrium constant does. So the right hand side is going to look exactly like that. It's just this different letter Q indicating that it's not actually at equilibrium. And so if I go in and I plug in the initial information of 0 0.02 happens to be for all of these guys, which 
simplifies my math quite a bit because I can come in here and just cross out two of those and I know that Q is equal to 0 0.02 and if I compare that to a KC that's equal to 9.32 e to the minus 3 you can see that in this initial state Q is larger than KC how does Q get large? You have large numerators. If my numerator is too large, which is over here, that's the product side of things, that means some of these products need to react and they need to go in and become some more reactant. That will shrink Q until Q matches the equilibrium constant. And then you know it's actually in equilibrium. So you can see I'm removing some of these guys and so that is going to be a minus x because again the stoichiometry is one to one to one it's only minus one x for each of those guys if you had some other stoichiometry you would need to maybe have minus two x or minus three x if you consume one of these things more rapidly now again, it's 1 to 1 to 1, but I'm building over here on the left-hand side, so this is going to be plus x. Then for the equilibrium concentration, you add the values together. You add i plus c. 0 0.02 plus x. This is going to be 0 0.02 minus x, and also 0 0.02 minus x. Given that I know the equilibrium constant over here, that number happens to be 9.32 e minus 3. I'm going to set that equal to, and now I'm taking these different values that are down here, that are the equilibrium concentrations, and I'm plugging them in into their respective place. So when I do that, I will have something that looks like this. Those are my two products. Now I need my reactant in there, 0, 2 plus x. And now you can start to see why I mentioned this is going to become a quadratic. My goal is to solve for x now. So doing algebra, I'm going to multiply that entire denominator over to the left-hand side. It's going to be 1.864e minus 4 plus... Okay, then I need to do FOIL on the right-hand side, 0 0.0004. So I'm just doing algebra here. I get this expression. I'm just going to switch colors so it's easier to keep track of everything. Now what I'm doing is I'm grouping like terms. And I've set that up so that I can use the quadratic formula now to solve for x. And in doing that, I find that x is equal to 0 0.0445 or 0 0.00480. If you're doing this at home with me, I am rounding a little bit here and there. We need to get rid of one of these solutions. One of them doesn't make sense. And if you look carefully, this is actually quite a large number compared to what we are dealing with. If I were, for example, to use that solution, then over on either of these guys, it would swing me into a negative concentration, which just doesn't make any sense. And so that is the one that we need to exclude. Our one that we actually like is this guy. So from here, we can just finish off the problem and write the concentration of each of our five species at equilibrium, which is what we were asked to do. I'm just plugging in that value for those x's there. So if I take 0 0.02 plus x, I get 0 0.0248. This has units of molarity. And then the concentration of my two reactants, as I have the equation written, those are equal, so I'm just going to write that out like this. They are both equal to 0 
too, also molarity. And again, you'll notice that I held on to more sig figs than I probably should have based on that original number. However, uh, I didn't want to lose too much information in the sample problem here. So this was the ice table right here. That allowed us to use the equilibrium constant here in order to actually figure out what are going to be the equilibrium concentrations of all my species. So that's my final answer. Hopefully that made sense to you and if it did, let your computer know.